The scene started with the crowd excitedly shouting about the match they had all been waiting for. The referee introduced the participant Daniel with the title of the Crusher Crushes, and his opponent RMC named Kwon Young Min with the title of the Master. The referee made them face each other and ask if they were ready. He signals a fight and Daniel immediately runs to attack him. But he ducked in time and kicked him in the face hard making him fly away, then landed on the ground and passed out. The crowd can't believe that he finished the fight in two seconds. Still, the referee made everyone calm down and announced that he won. After it, the reporter asked him to share his thought on his victory and he replied that is happy to have won and that day must be the day he truly stand at the pinnacle of the world, so now he will retire. The next day, in some apartment building, he was lazing around at his house watching the news announcing his sudden retirement. But he knows that it might be noisy at first, and it'll quiet down soon because the popularity of martial arts isn't what it used to be. He rolled around saying his board. Suddenly someone raised a hand and slapped his back hard. He asked her why she hit him, and she told him to go out and make some friends or something. He asked her where do we even find friends, and she replied that he had been an outcast his whole life, focusing only on sports. So he should go to a gym or somewhere he wants, but he told her that he's retired, so he won't be working out and he's going to rest. She furiously asked him if retirement is something to brag about and asked him why would he retire at only 24 years old. He replied that it was because there was no one left to challenge him, while posing proudly, making her confuse. He explained that it's been a long time since he felt relaxed, so he'll keep on resting. She warned him that he'll gain weight in no time if he do that, and asked him if he knows that it's easier to gain weight after retiring. But he just sarcastically agreed with her saying it would be a loss for humanity if his face gained weight. And he lay on the sofa to tease her and said he's too lazy. She sits down and grabs the remote while telling him to try playing games because they're all the rage these days. The television showed the final saga game, then the screen showed the two men who were starting the interview. The interviewer said recently, there has been growing curiosity about the impact of real-life martial artists, or users with good control, entering the game's final saga, and asks the man named Ashton how about him and what he gonna do if recently retired Master Kwon Young Min was to appear in the final saga. He smiled and replied that no matter how skilled Master Kwon Young Min is, he won't stand a chance in the final saga. The interviewer asked him what he mean by it, and he explained that control is important because it's evident that many athletes have already made a name for themselves as rankers. But control alone is not enough to understand the game, leveling up and obtaining items are essentials as well as number-based battles. In that sense, it's absurd to compare him to Young Min, no matter how great he is. The interviewer was shocked and asked him if his saying that he could still win even if he had the same level and items. He replied that even if Young Min level were high, he would definitely be the winner. Young Min may be a master in reality, but in the final saga, he's the master. He is pissed hearing it, and wonders how dare him win against him. He told her that his giving it a try making her excited, and she hugged him telling him that once he try it, it was really amazing, and she was a pretty successful ranker too making him ask her when did she start playing so many games. He sneaked out leaving her dancing around and making him wonder if being a ranker was really that impressive. Then he remembered that there was a post arguing about who was stronger between himself and the other rankers, and wonders whose that strong rankers might be. The next morning, in the street, the people were surprised and amazed looking at him while he was walking. He heard the people wondering if he's a celebrity and the others knew that he was Kwon Young Min, the world's strongest man. He was walking hearing all the people's flattering words about him, and was happy and shy at the same time to his popularity. A few minutes later, he arrived at the final saga building. The workers were chatting happily and suddenly stopped when he walked inside. They are all amazed and can't believe seeing him there. One of the workers approached him and asked how can she help him and was surprised when he asked her how do he play the final saga. She can't believe it and asked him if he really wants to play their final saga, making him ask if he can't and turned around saying he'll go play Linux 5 in a different neighborhood instead. But she stops him and told him that she had always wanted to serve him. She shyly pointed the way and explained that they start with the body scan first. They arrived in the scan room and he was standing topless while the machine scanned him. She explained that the stats will come out based on strength, agility, and stamina just like in the game. She count down looking at his body and looks down at the screen. She was shocked that the results were all max. She can't believe it, but at the same time she expected it because he's the master. A few days later, in Kandalsa, the final saga producer and operator building, the workers were looking at the trophies on the screen and were amazed by them. The operator man asked his co-worker why there were so many trophies and said that it was a guy named Master Kwon Young Min. He asked his leader what should they do about it, and explained that normally when a pro player starts playing a game, they would have to add the additional experience to fighting related mastery. She told her that it was the principal and asked if there was a problem. He replied that one international championship win is an additional 20 points, and one domestic championship win is 5 points. So if they add all those up it's over 500. 
She was amazed and said she would have never imagined it to happen. Before that day, he was in his apartment, yawning and sitting up realizing that it's been a while since he have had such a long nap. He stands up wondering if the guy goes and if he leave already. Then he notices the light inside the room and looks at it carefully. He walked inside and touched it wondering where should he try. Then he put on the suit and said that the exclusive suit doesn't feel too bad. He put on the helmet and goes inside the machine. He lay down and suddenly, the machine lit up, making him surprised. He shout while it move him inside the game, suddenly, an interface appeared making him confused. It showed him it searched for his account information, but not found anything. It created a new account for him and searched for character information. But it didn't found any, so he asks him if would he like to create a new character and told him that the body scan data are available, so it asks him would he likes to load it. He replied go ahead, and it warned him that ability scores will vary based on the body scan results and updates are possible after one month. Then it showed that his strength, agility, and stamina all max and all start at 20. Also, adjustment will be applied to the remaining abilities. It told him that the body scan result will be added to the tutorial evaluation results. He was panicking and wondering why are there so many things, after arranging it all. The interface asks him to choose a character name. He really didn't think of one and decided to name his character Ryan. He typed it into the monitor and saved it. Suddenly, a clone appeared in front of him making him surprised and the interface welcome him and wish him success in writing the last legend of the world, then ask him if he would like to start the tutorial. He agreed and it showed him that his moving to the tutorial. Then he vanished. A few minutes later, he was avoiding the monster's attacks making the operators amazed and wondering how he can do it. The monster gathers a ball of power and attacks him with it continuously, but he told it that it's nothing much and jumps closer to it while avoiding the attacks. When he was close to attack it, it just laughs and he hit it with just one strike, making the producers who were watching him stun. The guy told to his team leader that it was no joke and that the tutorial clear could be a new record for all stages. The lady replied that the monitoring team must be wondering if that is a bug. The man asked how did he manage to clear all 10 stages of the tutorial perfectly, wasn't that impossible, and wonders if it's even the movement of a human. She replied that the data itself is made by sampling young men movements, so theoretically, it's possible, making him can't believe of young men movements. Meanwhile, inside the game, he was avoiding all the orc attacks. It lifts its axe to attack him, but he just smiled, kicked its axe broking him, making it surprised, jump above of it while lifting his feet high, and do an axe kicked on its head, making it fall to the ground hard. He get down close to it, and look at it while it's vanishing slowly. He was bored and asked how long did he have to keep fighting those training monsters. Then later, the other monster arrived and he killed it. The bear monster arrived and he killed it too. Then lastly a slime monster arrived and he killed it too like the others. While he's looking at the monster vanishing, the interface told him that he has acquired the hidden skill named Ultimate Strike. It's level 1 with a passive that concentrates all attack power on a single point to amplify its power. Using it, his attack power increased by 300%. Critical damage increased by 300% when hitting a weak point and additional damage increased by 10% for each consecutive weak point hit max of 20 stacks. He said it was good and the weak point detection skill he got earlier was nice too, but it's getting boring, so he wonders if it's a failed game after all. Meanwhile, in the Angelus coffee store, she excitedly asked her if the master really decided to start playing the final saga because of her. She told her to keep her voice down and asked her why would she lie. She also told her that he even registered as a user so he might be currently playing. Her friend was amazed that her brother is playing a game and said she couldn't believe it when he suddenly retired, but now he's playing a game too. She told her that his brother was good at everything, but she asked her what was wrong with her expression because she don't look happy. She replied that as far as she know, her brother had never given anything his all, not even once making her friend ask what did she mean. She explained that his brother never had the chance to unleash his full power because the world is too small and weak to accept him, so she wonders what if there was another world, a different world called a game. He was surprised in stage 30, his facing a doppelganger. They look at each other and is really impressed. The doppelganger tries to kicks him while he's thinking to finish it in one go. But he avoided it swiftly and run away a bit. And look back and do a Conor McGregor spinning back kick, hitting its nuts. It kneel to the ground and shake in pain. It falls and slowly fades away leaving him to think that even though he did it, it's still creepy. The interface told him that his training was complete and his final score is all kill and his current accumulated ranking is first place. As a reward for transcending beyond the mission objective, all his abilities are increased by 5 each, his final evaluation is SSS plus and is the embodiment of martial arts perfection. It searches for a suitable martial bone, and when it's done, it asked him which one would he like to choose. A martial god body or nature's body, but he wonders what are those inside realizing that he should have checked the basic information before logging in. 
Suddenly the interface appeared and showed him the difference between the martial bone, martial god body, and martial bone, nature's body. He realized that the martial god's body boosts pure martial arts combat power while nature's body enhances combat power through skills and he wonders which should he choose. After just a second, he chooses one and it faded away. He has already experienced the pinnacle of martial arts and for him, it's only natural to try a new path for a new challenge. The interface showed that he chose nature's body and it initiated martial bone modification. He felt something making him confused, then he shouted in pain because of it. The scene shifted to the Angelus coffee shop where she asked him if she really has decided to help her out and called her a high-level ranker. In games, a high-level player helps a low-level player called Glossary Helping. She replied that she can't help until the tutorials ends. She remembers continuously reminding his brother to remember Velrose. She asked her if even his brother is the master, she can't just start at level 1 and fight monsters, but he replied no and explained that if it's him, there's going to be more to it. Meanwhile, inside the game, he punched the monster making it fall to the ground. Seeing it, the others were surprised. He landed on the ground making the monster shock and he do another Conor McGregor spinning kick, hitting the two monster. One of them tried to attack him from behind, but ended up getting a karate chop and thrown into the ground. The monsters slowly fade away while he's saying that all the monsters are nothing special. He heard something from a distance and saw the other players fighting against the other monsters. The players attacked the monster leaving him speechless and just opening his status window. In it, his name is Ryan, level 1 unemployed and his martial bone is nature's body, the same as his title. His health is 650 to 650. His mana is 550 to 550, hunger and thirst were zero. His status is normal, his strength and stamina were 20 plus 45, his agility and intelligence were 10 plus 45, and his unused ability points is zero. He thinks his stats are weird and wonders why there's a plus 45 for everything and if could it be because of his nature's body. He looked around pissed that it was a messed up balance and thinks it was a doomed game. He stopped looking around because he saw something and wondered if he shall head on over the way he was looking at. Then he jumps to the stone step by step until he gets down making the other player notice him, going to the high level zone. He walk inside it without knowing what that place is and halfway inside of the zone. He heard something growl. He saw something staring at him and they come out looking at him furiously. He noticed that the monsters were level 25 blue wolves. He wonders why it suddenly changes because the monsters he was fighting before were level 10. But for him, it doesn't matter. The wolves walk closer to him growling, but they heard a loud growl making him and the wolves surprised. The wolves immediately run away fast in fear leaving him confused. Then something behind him steps forward making the ground break. He looked back and saw a big monster behind him looking at him smiling. When it roared at him furiously, he saw that it was the wild forest king grizzly bear level 35 making him ask if isn't a joke. The bear angrily roared and tried to attack him making him surprised. It landed on the wall, breaking it. Fortunately, he was fast to avoid it. In the fog, its red eyes showed and come out fast to attack him. He steps back and avoided it realizing that it was fast for its size while he was detecting its weakness. It showed that the bear's face is its weak point. So, he jumps continuously and readies himself like a boxer. The bear tries to attack him, but he easily avoided it. It furiously continues to attack him, but he easily avoided it all. It gets irritated and tried to scratch him. He saw an opening and punched it in the chin making it slam into the stone hard. Then he jumps and goes beside it. Then punches again in the face rapidly, making it lose a few sharps teeth. Then he gathers all a strong force and kicks it hard in the face making it fall and collapse to the ground making a loud impact. The interface appeared to congratulate him and told him that he obtained the achievement of defeating a bear at level 1. Levels are just numbers, king of the forest, and a unique title that who defeated a bear at level 1 without anyone's help. How were you able to hunt it? It also told him that all his attacks power increased by 5%. Suddenly his item broke into pieces and fall to the ground making him wonder why his item disappearing and if its durability was down to zero already. He also said that it was a shame because he used up all of his assets to buy it, and wonder if it can't be fixed. Suddenly, the dead bear shined brightly and released a gloves. The gloves named Grizzly Bear's Forepaw. It made from the King Grizzly Bear's hide and it allows the wearer to expert the strength of a bear. Also, its attack power is 30, its durability is 500 to 500 and its strength is plus 3. He wears it amazed and thinks he's lucky. Then he opens his status window remembering Min Young said something. She told him that she doesn't know about the job tree, but told him not to mess with the spare ability points because she'll take care of it, so he should just save them. She explained that each ability point is precious in the game, so he should never distribute them recklessly. He also remembers that she told him to send her a message when he log into the game, but he notices that she isn't online, so he wonders if he should just level up for a while. Meanwhile, in the Condalsa, the man and the other workers can't believe what they see while watching him killing the bear on the screen. 
but she was furious and shouted that she told the development team leader that it was a bug. The man asked her if the user gets an experience buff too, isn't breaking the game balance too much and she replied yes then explained that the ultimate strike is way too overpowered making the workers stunned for a moment. One of them asked her who is the user and if isn't the game balance task force should know. The guy with the blue shirt replied that it isn't an advantage they can give to users and wondered if could it be an admin testing the game's balance. He replied that if that were the case, they would have received a notice. He wonders if it is even a person or an AI test for new quest in PCS. His coworker agreed and explained that seeing that they're constantly fighting it could be related to it and the others were wondering what the player's identity was. Hearing it, she furiously replied that they won't tell her. She shouted that the game balance team leader won't tell her and they were in an emergency because of it. So how was she supposed to write it in a month's report? She furiously shouted that she was going to grab that player's collar while his co-workers tried to calm her down. A few moments later, when she drank a coffee, she calmed down and told her co-worker that they should think positively, and the named character could influence new user influx. And it's an unfair game, to begin with, so she told his coworker that he'll be in charge of that user to which he agreed. She looked at her laptop wondering if they'll be able to obtain nature's body. She watched how he happily chased the running deer and smiled while killing the hopeless deer making her pissed and said the game's job balance will be turned upside down. Meanwhile, in Velro's village, a starter village, the guard yawned and was shocked when he goes inside the village. Someone told him that his equipment looks great which caught his attention. Then the other players asked him if he's a high-level player or an alt character, but he just turned around. Still, one of the players told him not to just leave and asked him if he can spare him 10 copper. The other players also asked him if he could spare an extra item and some spare loot, but he just turned around and walked away making the players think his items is pay to win and thinks he's arrogant. While walking away, he looked at the players and said everyone these days thinks they're entitled to favors, so he guess it's more comfortable to wander around alone. Then he remembers that he should get a job first, then opens the interface wondering where's the Marshall Guild. Later, he found the Marshall Guild place. Inside the guild, he was speechless while the big man was looking at him. He asked him how did he get there, but he just replied that he want to have a job making the man surprised and happily told him that he found the right place. He cleared his throat and asked him if he knew that it was the Marshall Guild in case he came there by mistake. He told him that he wanted to change his job to a martial artist. Hearing it, the man was ecstatic about it and patted his back while saying finally, someone who recognizes the true value of martial arts and confidently asked what other job is more manly than being a martial artist. The man handed him a blank paper and told him to just place his hand there and his information registration and job change will be. But before he can finish his words, he placed his hand on the paper. The man was shocked to see his nature's body and looked at him seriously. He noticed it and asked him if there was any problem, but the man just excitedly replied that there was no problem at all and thanks him for coming. The interface told him that he had stepped onto the path of an apprentice martial artist and his chosen basic job cannot be changed except under special circumstances. He was confused reading it when the man gives him a few books telling him that they were not much, but there they are free. He looked at the book wondering what skills do they have there and saw that it was all level 1 and so basic. He was disappointed for a few minutes looking at it and realized the reason why martial artists aren't popular. He grabs the book knowing that those skills are way too basic and their power amplification is pathetic. He knows that there's a way to amplify the damage by an additional 10% with a critical hit, but it doesn't have much merit for regular users. He told the man that the books are really not impressive to which the man apologized. After it, the man thanks him for his registration. He can't believe that he has the legendary nature's body. He looked at him carefully and soon, the data transfer was complete. After a few minutes of walking in the village, he wonders what he should do and he knows that he needs to get a quest, but wonders where he should go. He remembers his sister lecturing him to memorize, level up first and it is just like an exam. He continues to walk again wondering if he should try fighting some stronger opponents. Later, he saw flying fireballs attacking the monsters. The other players were fighting together and the others were alone fighting the monsters. He realizes that he arrived at the hunting ground, then looked at the diseased orc level 28, and thinks isn't too bad. Suddenly, a line shot passes by him making him surprised and hitting the orc. He saw the person who's using the skill line shot, while hitting the monsters making him wonder what line shot means. He guesses it means calling dibs on a monster, and there's nothing he can do when someone else claimed the orc. Then he turned around to look at the other orc to attack, but it was attacked by other players again. When he tried to find monsters to attack the other player's claim and killed it first, so he run realizing that he need to act faster to claim one. He saw a free orc and kicked it hard at the same time someone attack it with an arrow saying line shot. When it fall to the ground, someone furiously shouted to him that he don't have manners making him surprised. The lady told him that people should have manners when playing a game and he got the last hit on the monster after she attacked it with a line shot. 
He tried to explain that he tried to attack first, but she told him that her arrow hit it first and asked him if he have ever played a game like it because people should be considerate. Then she walks away leaving him pissed and thinks it's ridiculous. He sighed and wondered if attacking a monster someone else is attacking is equal to bad manners. He notices that the other players shoot arrows first to claim it and then have their teammates continue the attack. If that's the case, he realized that he can't hunt there as a melee attacker, and wonders if should he just buy a bow too. He looked at his side and decided to just go somewhere less crowded instead. He goes into the forest and made a lot of loud sound. He's avoiding an attack while telling it that it was too slow making it furious and attacking him continuously, but he just easily avoided it. It jumps to him closer to attack, but he still teases it to come to him making it angrier, and roar loudly wanting it to kill him. It attack him, but he avoided it, making the ground break. He launched an attack while telling it that it was so slow and punched it hard in the face. Then he jumps closer at it and kicks it in the chest, making it shouts in pain. It falls kneeling to the ground. He runs closer to it while recognizing its stance and kicks its chin using his roundhouse kick making it collapse to the ground. After he killed it, his level 25 increased to level 28. He was happy that he had leveled up a bit, but it was a shame that there was only one of them. Suddenly, a big stone was flying toward him. Fortunately, he noticed it in time and avoided being hit by it. Then he heard a monster walk and saw a lot of monsters coming his way, but he just smile and excitedly ready himself to finish it up. He attacked the monsters immediately and within a few minutes, all the monsters were down on the ground. He was sitting on one of them, while saying those weaklings dare to challenge him and decided to see if his stats increased by 5 each. His status window showed that his job as apprentice fighter got the new title of Master of Chaotic Battles. His health increased to 720, his mana increased to 610 and his unused ability points is 27. He was amazed that he can manage it and clicked his new title of Master of Chaotic Battles which is rare. Fighting and winning against dozen of enemies single-handedly without taking damage makes him a true Master of Chaotic Battles, and its effect is when fighting 10 or more enemies simultaneously, all his stats increased by 10%. He stands up to walk away knowing that there'll be more interesting things once he goes further. Then he looked up and decided to go higher. Up the forest, in the bush, he come out of it and saw a human from a distance. He looked closely and saw that it was a white cloud bandit level 45. He wonders what's there to steal in a place like it. Then he grabs a stone in the ground saying that being level 45 should make it interesting. He throws the stone at the bandits and hit him in the head. He furiously looks around asking who throw it and he comes out of the bush saying he's over there. He jumps to attack him while asking what is he doing there and attacks him furiously, but he avoided it, making him amazed because he's definitely stronger than the previous mobs he fight. Knowing that the guy's weapon is a longsword which clearly has a longer range than his fist, that's given him an advantage. But he avoided his attacks easily, making the guy angrier, still, he just smiled while avoiding it knowing that it will only work against weaklings. He punched the guy making it thrown to the air and landed on the ground hard that makes him roll multiple times before he finally stops. But before he can stand up, he arrived in front of him making him ask what are he doing and he replied that he just teaching him a lesson. Then he punches the guy with his strong, medium, and weak punches making him beg to spare him. He stands up leaving the guy shaking in pain, and turned around wondering where he should go next and if should he go to the village in the distance. In the village, he saw that there are people who are guarding it while he was hiding behind the stone thinking that it'd be great if there was a hole. But he thinks if there isn't a hole, he'll just have to make one. Then he run toward the tower and punched it hard. The watchtower collapsed making the people on it fall and the others panic. When it is fully down, he comes out running toward the surprised villagers. He ready his fist and punched the person in front of him. Then jumped toward the other people, stomp one in the head, and launch to attack the others. The scene shifts to him in his apartment, doing push-ups with just one finger while Min Young is sitting on his back telling him never to underestimate his opponents. He asked her if she knows the most effective way to fight multiple enemies and she replied just beat one at a time. But he said she's wrong and the correct answer is controlling the space. He told her to lean against a wall or lure her enemies into a narrow path to face as few enemies as possible at once and told her that her point isn't entirely wrong. In certain situations, it can be the best answer and it is just simple, target the enemy leader. He barges inside the room making the people inside it shocked wondering who is he. He faced one of the men and punched him which made him thrown away. Then he punches the two men also. The people outside tried to attack him from behind, but he just kicked them all in one swing and run fast toward where the leader is. Suddenly, the wall broke and a hand come out of it trying to grab him, but he avoided it. The man faced him and looked at him furiously asking him who is he. Looking at the huge man, he knows that he found the village leader and realized that he's trying to gauge his power first. The man asked him if he was just going to watch and he replied no way, then jumped to attack him. But the leader just smiled, then charges at him with shoulder charge and attack him broking the walls and stones that hit it. 
Unfortunately, he hanged himself from above in time realizing that if it weren't for it he was killed and staying in the narrow space is too dangerous, so he should change locations. He come out of it and was greeted by the villagers and the leader. He told him that he didn't expect him to follow him outside and that he has got some guts. He just smiled knowing that he was outmatched in terms of strength and he'll have to rely on speed. The leader teases him to come at him, but he knows that he was lucky that the leader has the same martial arts style as him which means it's easier to predict his attack patterns. He launches to attack him, and the enemy boss immediately looked back ready to attack him. Fortunately, he avoided it but got blown away by the impact of the boss attack. He tumbled in the air backward and kneeled on the ground, he knows that it was close to hitting him and almost got himself into big trouble. The leader laughs asking him if he realized the reality, how dare he challenge him with his fists, and if don't he regret it. But he just silently stands up knowing that the leader is definitely a high-level mob. One wrong hit and he'll be done for, but it was what he wanted. A fight, the thrill of possibly losing and that's the reason why he started playing the game. He just silently smile making the leader furious and run closer to attack him. But when he punched him, he avoided it and punched his hand making him surprised. Then he readies his one foot in his back and kicks him hard in the chin. The leader gets more angrier about it, and used his two hands to attack him using a lighting strike, but he jumped into the air backward to avoid it. He spit thinking young Min was a stubborn one and run toward him to attack while thinking it will be the end. He appeared in front of him telling him to give him a real challenge and he realized that in that kind of situation, he can't back down. The leader stomp his feet using his full power making him surprised to see a feint. He immediately changes it to punch while looking at him furiously and attack him using a shock wave making him shocked and block the attacks using his arms. He knows that he can't hold on and bend to let it pass. He clenches his teeth in pain and realizes that his left arm isn't responding making him wonder if it was the level of detail in the game. He got surrounded by the villagers and they walked slowly at him to kill him, but the leader shouted that nobody interferes. He smiled and told everyone that he won't let anyone get in his way because it was his battle. Hearing it, he smiled and told him that if he all had ganged up on him, he would have been done for, but now he know why he didn't. He also said that after all, he also hates being interrupted in his battles more than anything else. The leader told him that he felt the same. He wonders how long has it been he felt the tension and the thrill, then he runs to attack him realizing that he made the right choice playing the game. The leader once again used his shock wave to attack and killed him, but he was confused when he slid below him, told him that he was too slow, and elbow him from behind his knees. He was shocked and fall to the ground, he jumped to attack while he was on the ground, but he still tried to punch him. Unfortunately, he caught his hand and twisted it making him shake in pain. He jumped backward and told him that they were even now making him angrier and tried to step on him. He avoided it and told him that he got him, then kick him in the face hard making him thrown away while breaking a few teeth. The leader collapsed on the ground and the villagers can't believe that their boss lose. A lot of interfaces appeared around him telling him that he leveled up and he noticed that his left arm isn't bothering him anymore, so he wonders if it was because of the recovery side effect from leveling up. He looked at the dead leader on the ground and said it was a really fun fight. Suddenly, the leader lit up and released an orange item, which made him wonder what it was because the items he can get from the beginner zone are gray, white and blue, so he wonders if isn't just common, uncommon, and magic grade items. The villagers wonder what they need to do and decided that they need to avenge their boss. He grabs the item and immediately stands up making the villagers shock shouting to not let him escape and catch him. He runs inside the small alley while the villagers were furiously chasing after him. Suddenly, a loud power comes out of the alley throwing the villagers away, and making the others wonder what was going on. The fog faded showing many villagers who tried to kill him was killed on the ground. As he has said before, the most effective way to fight multiple enemies is to control the space. He teases the left villagers to come at him making them furious and attack him together. After killing all the villagers and the leader, he goes near the falls and looks around. He thinks it seems to be nearby and he showed the items he got from the leader earlier. A scroll appeared in front of him. It was a white cloud mounting bandit leader's treasure legendary. It's a map treasured by white bearded Goro, the bandit leader of white cloud mountain. He never let it out of his sight, as it shows a location in white cloud mountain that nobody knows what lies there. He was confused to see that it was legendary because he thought the highest grade was a magic grade and he guessed the location doesn't seem too far from there. He grabs the scroll and looks at the falls wondering if he shall give it a shot. He opens the interface realizing that he has made it to the spot marked on the map. But he wonders what next. He looks around to search and looks up wondering if it could be up there. Without realizing it, he steps on the stone, looking down nervously, and was on the cliff trying not to fall, guessing that there's a hidden cave behind the waterfalls because of the movies. Suddenly, he slipped and his fear come true because he fall, fortunately, he fall into the water. He tried to swim up when the map lit up and told him that he unlock it. 
the interface showed that he activates the hidden trial, testing his qualities and detected his nature's body. Then he passed his stage 1 trial without knowing anything. He woke up because of the light and found himself in the center of somewhere making him wonder where he was. The interface appeared in front of him saying it testing the target's eyes. Suddenly, something behind him arrived making him look back in surprise and saw a lot of monsters gazing at him. He wonders who those guys are, but the interface just tells him to silence the doll's golems. The golems jump toward him making him more confused about how do they expect him to silence them without any explanation. He vomited water while the golems were near him, but before it can kick him, he kick it first furiously saying that they did not even give him a chance to rest. He jumps backward realizing that he has no choice but to face the golems head on. One of the golems punched him, but he avoided it and kicks it hard in the face making it thrown away, but more golems approach to attack him. He blocks their attacks using his arms realizing that it's no joke. He launched his fist and punched one of the golems making it breaks into pieces, but it regenerates its body and gazed at him unharmed which he can't believe. The golems gazed at him while he wondered if wasn't silencing them supposed to mean destroying them. Then he remember the interface mentioning testing his eyes. He jumps to attack them, but they jump toward him to attack him too. Then he notices the golem's belly and wonders if it's their weak point. The interface told him that he passed the stage 2 trial and his third hidden trial activates as scanning his vitality and mana also testing his endurance suddenly felt a pain inside making him shake and wondered what was the unbearable pain and do they want him to endure it the golems attack him fortunately he avoided them but he realized that his mana and vitality are decreasing too while his panicking one of the golems kick him but before it hit his face he block it using his arm the golems continue to attack him and he just cover his face not to get hit even though he's in critical condition he smiled and punches back the golems knowing that he's not just going to give up and die his mana decreases rapidly, but he still continues to fight the golems even though it's regenerating. When he's busy taking care of the others, one of the golems attacks from behind him, fortunately. He notices it in time and throw the other golem at it and kicks it hard making them break into pieces, but he was surprised when he looks to his side because one of the golem jump and was close to hitting him. His mana is currently 5% which means he's out of time and there's no avoiding it, so he decided not to dodge it and it hit him in the face, but its hand broke making it surprised. He grabs its head and kneeled it hard making it break in half and thrown away. He finished attacking the last golems and the interface told him that he passed the level 3 test. He smiled at his victory and was ecstatic when he realized that the pain is gone. Then the interface showed that he have endured the trial of mana. All his stats increased by 5, he have acquired elemental affinity and all his elemental resistances and attack power were increased by 10%. Looking at his achievements, he was relieved that the pain is over then he look at the broken golems and notice something. He grabs it and looks at it wondering if it's a reward item. Suddenly, it broke and released a powerful light that made him panic and wonders what was going on. His gloves released a fog slowly and made his surroundings surrounded by it, then a woman come out from it. She happily told him that he shall carry on her progress, but before she can finish her words, he launched to attack her saying to strike first for victory. She jumped backward fast avoiding it, and tried to explain what was currently happening. But he doesn't care about it and told her that they should keep going. He thought that if there was a strong opponent, he fight them and don't need a reason to do it. He jumps toward her again to attack, but she just stands still saying that she got crazy one guy there and told him that if he wants to follow in her footsteps, he'll need that kind of spirit and determination, so she wonders if she should put him down and continue the conversation. She sighed and jumped breaking the ground under her and kicking him in the process making him shocked because of her speed, and was thrown toward the wall hard breaking the ground that he passed by. When he slams into the wall, he realizes that he can't move and she comes close to him and told him that he's not bad by trying to counterattack in the split moment. She explained that he won't be able to move for a while, so he should just listen carefully and told him that he passed her test, so she'll give him the opportunity to follow in her footsteps and if he faithfully walk that path, he can become the strongest among humans. Then she gives her hands to him and asked him if he'll accept her offer. The interface appeared telling him that he received the martial god's offer and asking him if he accept the quest. He thinks for a while looking at the interface and making her ask him why aren't he saying anything. He wonders that if he accepts her offer can he become as powerful as before, and he knows that it might be a difference in physical abilities. But her power and movement were truly extraordinary, so if he accepts her offer or even just reach a similar level becoming the strongest among users wouldn't be difficult. Then he asked her if he accept her offer can he become stronger than her. She laughed while answering that he could certainly become the strongest among the visitors, but he can't compare to her. Hearing it, he told her that he won't do it and he'll find another way to defeat her. She was shocked at first and got furious asking him how dare he refuse her offer. The interface showed that he have abandoned the quest the descendant of the martial god and warned him that he cannot be re-accepted it. 
He shakingly tried to stand up while telling her that if you have to follow her, he don't need to learn it. She was surprised that he was able to stand up because normally, he shouldn't be able to move for at least three minutes, so she wonders if did he overcome it with willpower. Also, she notices that he's tightly focused on landing a single hit. She smiles making him confused and she laughs hysterically saying he's an interesting guy. She happily said she lost and told him that she saw potential in him. But if that's what he wants, she can't help it, so she'll grant him the power to defeat her as he wishes. She searches for something inside his buns and takes out a book. She told him to take it and hand it to him. He accepted. it. Then the interface showed him that he have acquired the martial god's scripture. It was a god tier of item, and it was a book containing all the knowledge of the martial god, allowing the user to earn new skills according to their level, and upon use, it forcefully class changed to the currently unknown. Then he remembers Min Young telling him that there are only about 30 legendary grade items in the game so far, and it's not even clear if there's a higher grade but he just sleeps without paying attention to her words making her furious. He was surprised that out of nowhere there was a god divine tier and it was just a skill book. He looks at the book confused. She noticed it and told him not to worry too much and learning it doesn't make him her disciple. She told him that it was just one technique and asked if should someone who wants to surpass the limits of martial arts be tied down by a mere tool of technique. Suddenly he remembers something because of her words and realized that he didn't obsess over just one martial art like Taekwondo either. She turned around to walk away while telling him to watch closely from now on making him confused. Then she turned back, closed her eyes, and powerfully punched the air making the ground and the wall that hit it force break into pieces. Then she released a little of her power, gathered it around her hands, and made something like a dragon attack from it. After it, she smiled and he can't believe that he challenged someone like her. She told him that she won't give it a name, instead, he should find his own path and name it himself and told him that it was the homework she leave for him. Then she vanishes leaving a green crystal on the ground. The crystal is named Martial God's Soul Fragment which is legendary and it's a piece of the Martial God's Soul forged into a fragment of power. Its purpose is unknown. He grabs it and wonders what is the item with an unknown purpose and if it's a useless trinket with a legendary grade. He throws the fragment away and excitedly opens the book thinking that he should try using it because there's nothing to lose and there's no harm in trying. Suddenly, the woman comes out of the book making him surprised and asks him if he's prepared to put in the effort if he really wants power, and if he succeeds in it too. He'll achieve what he desires. The interface showed him a bone-crushing effort quest and told him to become a true powerhouse. He need genuine effort and talent that doesn't rely on physical strength and growth without the help of spare ability points until level 50. She told him that all his spare ability points raised so far will be reset, and his level will decrease according to the spare ability points he used. Then she wait for the process, but after a few minutes passed nothing come out, so she asked him why isn't anything happening and he replied that he remember, he never touched the spare ability points making her shocked and frustrated. He confusedly asks her what's going on because there's nothing has changed and what it was about, but she just vanished away leaving him saying she's a weird person. Then the interface slowly took him away, but when he finally backed outside, he realized that he's in the air and fall to the ground hard. He was lying on the ground wondering why of all places he's in mid-air, then sit up realizing that he returned to the same place again. But at least he got something. It was the Martial God's Gauntlet which is legendary. Gauntlet used by the Martial God in the past, it contains immense power and potential attack power of 30,000. Durability infinite is all stats plus 1,000, all martial arts skill levels plus 1. All damage increased by 700%, all skill effects increased by 300%, and its final evolution complete. Seeing how the stats were high he thinks it's insane, and it's totally overpowered, so he wonders if he should try using it once. He positioned himself to get ready and tried to punch, but before he can a lot of interfaces showed up and told him that his level is too low, the gauntlet adjusts to his level, as his level increased. Some of the gauntlet's abilities can be recovered, the power of potential within the martial god's gauntlet reacts to his natural body, and the gauntlet transforms according to his characteristics. After the warnings, the gauntlet released a light making him wonder what it is, then it released a lot of power. The interface appeared showing Elemental Master, Legend, and Sealed. Also, it told him that the transformed martial god's gauntlet that responds to the Guardian of Nature. It assists the user in controlling their element powers. Attack power is 200, durability infinite is all stats plus 10. All martial arts skill damage increased by 20%. Elemental attacks are available upon meeting specific conditions, and growth stage is 1. The interface showed him that he have reached level 50, so he cannot level up any further in the beginner zone, and he have completed the quest Martial God's final trial. He was shocked at what was happening and disappointed that his additional attack power of 30,000 has become 200. 
Then an interface once again showed up telling him that the martial god's soul fragment reacts to elemental master and its elemental attack is a fire that is currently available. He was confused asking what it was and if it was like magic. Then he realizes something and punched the air and broke the trees from a little distance. He realized that it was like it and it seems he still have to collect five more of the martial god's soul fragments. He was shocked to see that the reward for success is a rematch with the martial god and excitedly said he can fight again and can be a challenger again after such a long time. There are more skills added, but he decided to check those out later and thinks that it's time for him to leave the beginner zone. Meanwhile, at the airport, she arrived somewhere and received a message from her brother saying he have finished the beginner zone, asked where she was, and told her to give him some items and money because he decided to stay in the game. She started to walk while saying that was the first time hearing it from her sibling who has returned from abroad, but he already passed the beginner zone. She can't believe it because it's only been about a week since his brother started the game. She thinks that she should send him a message through the in-game messenger. She messages him saying she's proud of him for adapting quickly and asks him how was the tutorial, what did he get, and more questions. He told her to ask one question at a time and replied that he did everything he was supposed to do and his martial bone is a nature body. She replied that she hadn't heard of it before, but if he got it, it must be good, then asked many more questions. She was silently waiting for her brother to reply. But when she read that he was not level 30 and he raised his level a bit more in the beginner zone, so he's currently at level 50. She was shocked to hear it. She told him that she was amazed at his level 50 and asked what job did he choose. He replied martial artist. She told him that it was a weak class, but she guessed it might be different for him and told him that she'll send him some level 50 equipment and money by mail. He thanks her and asked what should he raise with his extra ability points because he haven't used any yet. She shouted that his brother is crazy because he really reached level 50 without using any extra ability points. She asked him if he's even a human because it was insane and how did he do it in such a short amount of time. Also, she told him that it must be a world record because his speed in reaching level 50 must be unparalleled and asked him if he really haven't used any extra ability points. He just replied that he don't know and that it just happened. She told him that she'll tell him more about it later and since he's a martial artist, his damage might be a bit lacking, but she'll send him some items with good attack power and strength options. Reading it, he said he doubt that he's lacking attack power and read that Min Young told him to check it in 5 minutes. She said that there are plenty of level 50 items in the auction house, so she'll find and send them immediately and she'll include some money and advice on how to invest his extra ability points. Also, told him to buy plenty of potions and rare scrolls and ask if he know how to check his mail. He replied yeah, thanks her and told her to hurry home. He scratches his neck realizing that things are hectic. Then he receives the items and invests his extra ability points as instructed. He managed to change his items and invest his points, so he decided to go out and try his skills. On the other hand, someone was watching him from above and asked if it was him. The man agreed and told her that young Min already changed his equipment. The other man was amazed that he had a full set of magic grade equipment, knowing that just selling those would make a fortune making the yellow haired guy laugh, but ask him if it's not a sub character. He replied no and told him to look at his insane equipment because he must have spent a fortune on it. He laughed and said he wanted to get new weapons anyways, so it works out well. Later, somewhere, he was searching and wondering where did they say to go and if he was in the right way. Suddenly someone screams for help which caught his attention. The woman was running away from something making him ask if she was running from a pervert, but he saw the grey main orc level 53 chasing the woman instead and he remembered that he was in the game. The woman trip and fall to the ground, but before he steps in, he wonders if he should take it down and if they won't complain about stealing a kill. Still, he walked forward and told the woman to get out of the way. The orc raised his axe to attack him and the woman smiled knowing that the grey main orc is on a different level from those in the beginner's zone. He jumps and punched the orc making it fall to the ground. She was shocked to see it and confused about how he took down the high level orc in one hit. She excuses herself to call him and he looks back telling her that he's sorry if it was about the kill stealing. She told him that it was not about it, and it was just, but before she can finish his words. Some arrow appeared in the air toward him, fortunately, he avoided it. He looked back and saw the arrow pierced in the ground. He looked up and saw two men asking him where he's rushing off to. They jumped down to face him and glare at him while smiling confidently. The interface told him that self-defense is justified and he can attack or kill the opponent without receiving a penalty. He positions himself wondering if it could be PK. If that is so, there's no reason to avoid it. Then he jumps toward the two men. One of the men raised his axe furiously and attacked him. But he avoided it and kicked his side. He told him to wait and said he let his guard down for just a moment but he still punched him in the chin making him fly to mid-air. The other men were furious, but the woman was afraid. 
He attacks him using arrows and his arrows hits the bearded man's butt. He realized that it was a team kill, then the woman run toward him telling him to die and attack using her sneak attack. Fortunately, he avoided it in time. He avoids all her attacks confused while she furiously continues to attack him. Then she hit him in the side and smile because she thinks she won. But she noticed that he catch her blade. He told her teasingly that if she try to hit someone from behind, she should know the consequences and grab her hand making her panic, and told him to let go of her hand. But he slams her hard to the ground, making her unconscious. The last man grabs his weapon from behind and attacks him using it telling him that he won't let him die easily. He jumps continuously to avoid the attacks that tried to hit him. Then he stops and balances himself, looks up, and smiles at him making him more furious. He attacks him using his sword while telling him to die. But he easily avoids it. He continued to attack him but he didn't hit him even once. While it's close to hitting him, he thinks a sword is better than a crossbow, but he knows that the man is not even close. He ducked to the left to avoid it, launches toward the man, and the man tries to block it but immediately changes his attack. Then he kicks him upward making the man fly into midair and told him that it was called an upward kick making the man pissed even though he's shaking in pain. The man collapsed on the ground, next to his comrades while young Min leveled up. He was amazed that he level up and thinks those guys must have had a pretty high level. Then he noticed something in the ground and saw that there were also dropped items. He wonders if he should continue hunting and follow the direction where the orc appeared. Later, he arrived at a tribe place and he thinks he found the Greymane orc tribe. Also, he remembers that the quest was to defeat the chief and rescue the captured prisoners. He decided to hit them in the head first and look at the prisoners thinking that it was the best method. On the other hand, the people he defeated a while ago woke up, and one of the men asks his comrade if he was crazy and told him that Young Min is not an alt character. The man punched the tree in frustration and told his comrades that his sure Young Min is an alt character, and a skilled one too because he thinks there was no way Young Min is rancor. The lady shouted to them that it was not the important part and told them that she lost her wooden weapon, then asked what she should do now. The man shouted to her to wait a few seconds and told her that her problem is not important. The lady poutingly asks him if he's mad at her making her comrades shocked and he told her that's not it and just wait a bit. He furiously shouted that he'll definitely catch that bastard who is young Min. The other man was surprised and asked him if he's calling for backup. He replied that even if they get carried by their paid items, there's no business with the weaklings and they were ahead of them after all. After they call for backup, the two men were stunned for a while, then he furiously asks the person on the other line if he can help him out right now and told him that he found a guy who's decked out with rare, and magic items from spending money. The person in the other line asks if he's joking and asks if they really got crushed trying to take young men on. Then remind him that he told idiots like them to scout and find a suitable PK target, but they got greedy. The man told him to be quiet and that there are circumstances there, but the person on the other line told him to cut the crap and give them the coordinates. He also told him that they'll be coming to them soon. He thanked the person and told him that it was over there. Then their call ended. The person on the other line said he can't believe he was in the same guild with idiots while sitting on the big guy on the ground. Then he looks back and asks his comrades if they should start hunting. At the same time, in the tribe of orcs, there's a loud explosion. The chief orc heard it and was confused. Suddenly, houses near him exploded making him surprised and wondered if it was a sneak attack. He punched the house foundation and continues breaking all the houses foundations he saw, making the orcs angry and the others were calling for help. A few minutes later, he completely trashes the tribe houses, then the chief orc comes out of the broken house and furiously asks how dare he sneak attack. But it immediately got kicked in the face and he shouted that it was called roundhouse kick, making the chief orc members speechless. He notices the orcs and they called him a sneak attacker, then warned him to stop immediately. But he just smiles creepily and kicks the orcs he saw that was alive while telling them that he is not going to stop for someone like them. Suddenly, someone attacked the orcs from the distance making him surprised and confused. Then he looked at the orcs who are getting hit and saw that it was an arrow. He lift one of the dead orc in front of him as a shield while wondering if there were archers in the orc tribe. He put down the dead orc when he heard people's footsteps and saw a few users walking toward him. The blue man haired laugh noticing that he just dodged and said just as he heard. He's quite skilled. One of his comrades agreed saying that young men abilities must be impressive, even without paid items, but the other man thinks he is just a walking item bag. He noticed that the users had red eyes making him wonder if they a peek her and they were not rushing their attack, so he wonders if that was a sign of confidence. He saw that the blue-haired guy named Nocturne is level 69, same as his comrades. He knows that level 69 is close to the highest level they can achieve around Belro's village. He's currently at level 52, but he realizes that he has several bonus ability points and if he simply calculates the numbers, he wonders if he might even be stronger than them. He smile wondering that in a situation like it, wouldn't be worth trying 5 against 1. 
Nocturne notices that he smiles and asks him if he thinks they are pushovers. Nocturne's teammates ask him if Young Min loses his temper and he told him that they should see if he can still laugh after getting hit. One of Nocturne's teammates jumps toward him while holding an arrow telling Nocturne that he'll take care of him. Nocturne told his teammates to be careful because Young Min got incredible attack power, but the man just told him that he can take on the weakness who is Young Min all by himself. He attacked him using his arrows, but he just avoided them and jumped toward the man making him surprised. When he's in front of him, he ready his leg and kneeled him hard in the face. Suddenly, Nocturne appeared calling him crazy and swings his weapon at him. Fortunately, he avoided it, but arrows fly toward him making him surprised. Fortunately, he attacks it in time to break them. He realized that he shouldn't have given them the chance to shoot an arrow. Nocturne swings his weapon to attack him, but he avoided them all noticing that it looks powerful, but it's useless if it doesn't hit him. Nocturne furiously called him a rat-like bastard and attack him powerfully, but he jump in time to avoid it. Nocturne was confused about what was going on and why won't his weapon come off while trying to lift it up. He smiles noticing that it's time, steps at Nocturne's weapon to get forced, and kicks him multiple times making him thrown away. When he's going to attack him using his magic barrage, a lot of sniping arrows attack him, but fortunately, ducks in time to avoid it. One of Nocturne's teammates asks Nocturne if he's alright. Young Min realizes that it's interference and he can't keep avoiding damage, so he wonders what should he do. Then he remembers that if it's hard to get close, he has to run away first, so he runs away fast. One of Nocturne's teammates notices him and attacks him while angrily asking him who said he could escape. The other man told his teammates to catch him before they reach the end of the forest. He looked back and noticed that the users are following him as expected and told them in his mind to follow him closely because he was not going down without a fight. Later, the users were furiously searching for him and wondering where did he go. The man told his teammates to stop chatting and look for young men and his teammates irritatedly asked him back how can they find young men if he was completely hidden. The man got angry hearing it and told his teammates that it seems like they completely lost the rat-like jerk who is young men. The other man disappointedly said Young Min was a valuable target, but his teammates told them that they should just go back because their mood is ruined. Young Min smiled from somewhere and launched toward the arrogant man, then kick him hard from behind. The other man was surprised and wondered where he come from all of a sudden, while the other man can't believe that their comrade died in just one hit. But he just smiled showing two fingers at them and told them two more to go making the two men furious and ask him how dare he provoke them. He slowly faded making the men surprised. One of the men asked how did he disappear and his comrades replied that it was a stealth skill. The man told his comrade to watch out because Young Min could jump out from anywhere making the man panic and ask why did no one tell them that Young Min has a skill like it. On the other, he was above the tree and thinks using the dense forest to block long range attacks and striking with the stealth skill from the dagger dripped by the bandit is great. Then he jumps toward the man and kicks one of them hard in the face. Then he spun around to face the other man who was trying to shoot him and use his knee to hit the man's face, and the man falls to the ground while he's sitting on top of him. He raises his fist happily and punched hard the man in the face. Suddenly, he notices something from behind, then an arrow attacks him. But he avoided it all. He was surprised to see the man he attacked standing in front of him because he thought they'd be out in one hit. He tried to move to attack the man, but he was surprised and confused about the thing underground that was holding him because his feet won't move. The man spit and teasingly asked him if he think he could just keep on running, then told him that the thing holding him is called Shadow Bind. He doesn't know what it is, but he knows his stealth skill won't work, so he tried to break free with his strength making the man laugh. While asking him if he really thinks he can break a confirmed skill effect with just brute force and ask him if he's really an alt because he doesn't even know such basic things. He confusedly asks the man what is an alt making the man surprised. He was confused about what on earth is the man talking about. But the man was confused too about what's was wrong with him and if he is not an alt, he was a dangerous guy. He told him that they can't let him grow and more and they need to crush him now, then pointed his piercing arrows at him while telling him that they should keep killing him until he quits the game. Then he attacks him using it making him surprised. He remembers the scene of two men shooting each other, but dodging it. Min Young asks him that even if he is her big brother, dodging bullets isn't easy and he replied that it's nothing more than a minor issue. Then he remembers saying first, they need to read the direction of the gun barrel and if they know when their opponent is going to shoot, they can dodge bullets too. The man was surprised that he dodged it and wonders what kind of guy he is. Then he shoots him using rapid fire telling him that they should see if he can dodge them too. Fortunately, the shadow bind's skill duration ended in time, and he got released. He immediately jumps to the side to avoid the attacks. Then he jumped toward the man, but the man just smiled and summoned a monster behind him. It attacked him using its claw but he avoided it furiously calling it a weakling and asking the man if he thinks it's enough. Then he run toward the man knowing that he just need to catch him, but one of his feet stepped on the trapped in the ground making him shocked. 
The man laughs hard telling him that using shadows is another skill of a hunter and it's fun watching rookies like him blindly charge in, then order the monster to kill him to which the monster launched at him and tried to bite him. The blood splash out everywhere, but the man was shocked and confused about how he managed to kick the monster using his other feet. The man uses his arrow to attack him telling him that he'll tie up all his limbs. He looks back and sees the arrows starting to grab him from behind. But he furiously asks the man if he thinks that would work on him twice and immediately punch the ground hard, then use his elemental attack fire that hit the man even as far away from him and made the man shout in pain. Then he runs to attack the man knowing that if he burns away the shadow with fire, the technique becomes useless, suddenly the monsters appeared behind him to attack. But he still launches at the man telling it that it was too slow and punched the man with his final blow in the face making the man thrown away, while the monster was still behind him launching an attack. But when it was close to biting him, it faded away. He smiled and said it was close. He looks around and knows that with that, it's over, then he opens the interface seeing that the users had better loot than he thought. A lot of items in good quality as well because of peaking and he wonder if the users were close to level 70. He remembers Min Young telling him that after completing the first job change and reaching level 70, items won't drop from killing beginners anymore. So he thinks he can use the equipment he got for the next level without asking his sister and he wonders if he should take on more peekers while Nocturne is attacking like an idiot in his back. He looked back and saw Nocturne who was shocked to see his teammates dead on the ground and ask if his teammates really already dead. He looked to his side and saw young Min smiling at him creepily and telling him that they say a tiger comes when he speaks of it making him realize that it was over. Then he attacks him making him shout in pain. Later, in the village, he was walking in the street when he heard the man say to his friend that the person he talked about is him. Also, he heard people saying he was a rookie, but his equipment is incredible. He completed a lot of quests at once and wonders how he did it. Then he noticed something and when he turned around he saw people looking at him, as he expected, there are hidden eyes watching him. A few minutes later, he arrived at the palace and goes inside. When he entered he saw some people, and the lady welcomed him. She explained to him that they take care of everything from equipment to consumables and even currency, and thanked him for visiting the Goblin Trading Company. Then she asks him if he has anything to deposit, and he gladly replied yes, then put three bows on the table. Someone from behind the people furiously said the bow is his, but his comrade told him to be quiet. He caught the hidden people in the act and he knows that the bait has been set. He opens the interface that investigates the labyrinth of the dead and wonders if he should choose a fishing spot. Well guys, that's the end of the video, if you like this video comment part 2 in the comment section. Also subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and like the video. Thank you for watching and see you next time again.